In this country, you can get a seven-seater for less than a million pesos. But if you want one with more bells and whistles, higher ground clearance, and possibly four-wheel drive, you'll have to spend around two million pesos. But if you come across an SUV or crossover that costs around three million pesos, I'll probably leave you wondering, what on earth can justify that price tag? Well, let's find out by taking a closer look at the Subaru Evoltis. The exterior of the Avoltus doesn't exactly scream opulence, in the sense that it doesn't really look more extravagant than SUVs or crossovers that cost significantly less. In fact, its styling is rather conservative, but that also means that it isn't polarizing or offensive. What I like about this is that even if it has a conventional silhouette, its styling is distinctly Subaru. So it may not be as flashy as some of its competitors, but you'll be happy to know that there's no shortage of features or exterior kit here, starting with these LED headlights, which are also steering responsive headlights that come equipped with high beam assist. This also means these lights will pivot towards the direction the car is headed, and you can leave your high beams on without worrying about blinding other motorists. Because these headlights will automatically shift to low beam if it detects sufficient lighting or a preceding or oncoming vehicle. Naturally, you also get LED DRLs and fog lamps. Along the side, styling remains conservative, and you get power folding side mirrors with repeaters. The Evoltus rolls on 20-inch wheels wrapped in 245 50 series tires. Behind these wheels are ventilated disc brakes for the front and the rear. Yes, you heard me right, it's ventilated for the rear as well. You also get more than enough ground clearance at 220 millimeters. At the back, you get LED taillights that also sport a very conventional and conservative design. But personally, I prefer these over the Subaru Forester's taillights that look like they're doing something like this. The black body cladding is a bit too thick for my taste, but it does give it a rugged and more outdoorsy vibe. However, I do like the fact that you don't get tacky fake exhausts. You also get a power tailgate with memory settings, and this reveals 504 liters of cargo space, and that's with the third row seats up. So that means it doesn't have to be a toss between more passengers or more luggage. And look, you even get additional underfloor storage. Folding the third row gives you 1,345 liters, and you can even fold the second row to give you 2,449 liters of cargo space. That's massive, but let's see what that translates to when it comes to interior space for the passengers. I don't even know where to begin because there's just so much to cover here. But uh, let me start off by saying this follows the design theme of the exterior in the sense that it doesn't exactly scream opulence. The design may be straightforward, but closer inspection will tell you that all the materials are actually very nice to the touch. There's even some wood accents and leather stitching to give it more of a premium feel. And the only reason why I say it isn't opulent is because its functional side is just a bit more glaring. For instance, you get 19 cup or bottle holders, and that translates to almost three cups per passenger, which is more than enough for what your bladder can handle on an average road trip. There's also heaps of storage areas, like these indents here on the dash, the tray on the center console, and this cubby, which is also felted. The leather seats are also extremely comfortable and power adjustable for the driver and front passenger. I also love the fact that there's a thigh extension for the driver. You also get heated and cooled seats for the front passengers. And while it doesn't really make sense to get heated seats here, considering our climate, my kids actually love it. Finding your ideal driving position is really easy, and there's this tilt and telescopic steering wheel, which helps you maintain a relaxed and natural posture while driving. The instrument cluster may seem dated by today's standards since it's mostly analog, but at least it doesn't feel overwhelming. And besides, you still get a multi-information display, but aside from the one you get in the instrument cluster, you also get another one front and center. And some might say that that isn't necessary, but it really helps to segregate all the information. You get your driver's information here, your multi-information here, and your infotainment over here. The infotainment comes in the form of this well-integrated eight-inch touchscreen. 
This comes standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is also hooked up to a series of cameras, so you get your front view here and your rear view here. But that isn't exactly this vehicle's party piece because this comes with a 14-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds pretty good. Sound signature is kind of warm, and it does provide good separation, while frequency response is pretty broad. Moving on to the HVAC, you get a tri-zone, fully automatic climate control system. And it's really great to see physical knobs and buttons, which makes operating this a breeze. This is the kind of interior that I really wouldn't mind spending hours in every day. But aside from that, you also get nice touches such as this spy mirror. So you can keep an eye on the kids at the back. You also get the smart rear view mirror, which works as a regular mirror, but also displays an image from the camera when you toggle the switch. And that comes in really handy at night or when your rear view is obstructed by passengers. Speaking of rear passengers, the Evoltis gets a 223 seating configuration. So the second row occupants get captain seats. The seats recline and move forwards and backwards quite a fair bit. There's a lot of room for the second row passengers as there's almost half a foot of room to spare for head and leg room for someone who's 5'8". Getting to the third row is not difficult and space there is adequate, although they aren't the best seats in the house. However, all the occupants are guaranteed to have a pleasant riding experience because aside from getting separate climate controls, the rear passengers will find no shortage of air vents and USB ports. There's also a huge 54-inch panoramic sunroof that makes the interior feel more airy and spacious. So the interior definitely has a lot to offer, but is that enough to justify a price tag significantly more than 3 million pesos? Well, I think it's time to get this out on the road. So we're behind the wheel of the Subaru Evoltis. And before we talk about driving dynamics, I want to talk a little bit about what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And you can attribute that to two main things. One, this has a boxer engine. And two, it has a fully symmetrical all-wheel drive system. So the fully symmetrical all-wheel drive system works by detecting which of the wheels has the mo most torque. And in turn, it sends power to those wheels. And that translates to better control and quicker acceleration. Then you have the boxer engine. So what exactly is a boxer engine? Well, the term boxer comes from the fact that the pistons fly flat. And they kind of emulate the motion of a boxer on a horizontal plane. And what that translates to is a lower center of gravity and better balance. So a lower center of gravity and better balance equates to better handling. And better handling means the car is more fun to drive. Under the hood lies a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, which pumps out 260 metric horsepower and 375 newton meters of torque. The best part about that is that peak torque is delivered between 2,000 and 4,800 RPM. And that's exactly where you want it. So the car feels very responsive and it's always light on its speed. Now this has a CVT, but I also want to see how it performs when you use the paddle shifter. Pretty good. So I'm not usually a fan of CVTs. In fact, I don't really like them. But this has simulated gears. And while typically it doesn't make sense to have paddle shifters on a CVT, because it just kind of tries to emulate a conventional transmission, this one does it really well. If you didn't know better, or if you didn't read the spec sheet, you'll actually think you're driving a conventional automatic. It's that good. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the efficiency and the smoothness of a CVT. Without of that, without any of that rubber band or drone that we all hate in CVTs. This is one of the best CVTs out there. Now another thing that makes this fun to drive is the steering. The steering is nicely weighted. There's a decent amount of feedback and it gets stiffer as you get faster. But what I really like about it is the steering ratio. It is really quick to respond. And for something this big, it actually makes the car feel a lot smaller than it actually is. So the steering is really quick to respond to your steering inputs and it makes driving extremely
extremely fun. You'll sometimes forget that you're driving an SUV or a crossover. This can go head to head with some sedans. But SUVs and crossovers need to cater to all the occupants and not just the nut behind the wheel. And in that regard, the Subaru Evoltus delivers, it delivers in spades, because the ride is extremely comfortable. And we can attribute that to the fact that this has a double wishbone suspension up front and McPherson struts at the back. And the ride is extremely compliant, yet there's hardly any body roll when you take it fast around the bends. It is really well balanced. And we can again attribute that also to the boxer engine. This is the kind of car that you can spend hours driving and I'll never feel taxing. Because the seats are extremely comfortable and the car feels smaller than it actually is, which I already mentioned earlier. But another thing that adds to that is the fact that visibility is really good. You'll never have to guess if you can actually fit this car into tight spaces because it's just that good. Plus the fact that you have a front and rear view camera and sensors all around, so you're well covered when it comes to that. NVH is also extremely good. You can hardly hear the noise outside. The cabin does a really good job in isolating. You hardly hear the engine, and you know, I hardly say that for a car with a CVT because of the droning effect. But this is so well insulated that you actually don't hear the engine, nor the road noise. So it really does translate to a pleasant riding experience. Not just for the driver, but for everyone on board. So as it stands, you're already getting a lot of car for the money. But we haven't even discussed the fact that this has Subaru EyeSight. Subaru EyeSight is like having an extra pair of eyes to help you stay safe on the road. It comes with a host of driver's aids and safety features such as rear cross traffic alert, reverse emergency braking, lane change assist, blind spot monitoring, and adaptive cruise control. The adaptive cruise control maintains your speed and distance from other vehicles. It even works in stop-and-go traffic. The Subaru Evoltus can be yours for 3,480,000 pesos. Now, I know that's a lot of money, but at this price point, it's hard to match the Subaru Evoltus in terms of practicality, space, features, performance, and most importantly, safety.